Hey guys, it's Amy and Carlin from the Iowa Developmental Disabilities Council back for another weekly Snapchat. This is the end of the fifth um, week of session and the pace is continuing to be fast. Um, the legislature is really just checking boxes. I think we mentioned that last time that they're checking off all of the governor's priorities. So they finished up school choice, they finished school funding, and, and last week they finished up what they're calling tort reform. What that means is it, ca it puts a limit on the amount of money a jury can award somebody who has been harmed or disabled or died because of a uh, medical error. So those have all been priorities of the governor and those are done now. Um, so they're moving on to their next uh, round of uh, priorities, which include the reorganization bill, the big one that changes all the state agencies around and the governor's um, health policy bill. So we'll talk about those two in a minute, but I, I wanna remind everybody that um, on Friday, it was the last day for legislators to request bills. So you're gonna start to see fewer bills get introduced um, over the next uh, few weeks, but we're moving really fast toward that first deadline, March 3rd. That is when bills have to um, get out of the committee. So that, you know when they're introduced, they get assigned to a committee, they have to meet with a subcommittee, and then they have to get through the committee process. And that all needs to happen before March 3rd or those bills are no longer um, alive for the rest of the session. So, and we're moving forward toward that date, but there's been some pretty positive news, Carlin, this week with um, some bills that we've been watching um, that have moved out of committee. Yeah, this past week, um, three bills that we've been tracking and um, supporting that moved out of committee were, first of all, House File 16. We all know it's House File 16. The number has now changed to House File 252. And this was introduced by Representative um, Chad Ingalls and provides educational scholarships for persons with disabilities, developmental disabilities, um, to attend a four-year accredited um, program in Iowa. So it's a great um, bill. It passed last year, but didn't go get all the way, um, passed the House, but didn't get um, all the way to um, the Senator, the Governor. So it's come out of committee. We'll go to the um, House floor for debate. Um, hopefully, and this is one that we're all supporting because it gives everybody a chance to go to college um, and make it specific for people with developmental disabilities. So that was um, um, a good one. And also um, House File 243, which is uh, regarding um, insurance coverage for autism. Um, this lifts the um, limits on age and also um, treatment, right? So mm -hmm. it doesn't matter um, what age or treatment level um, someone is at, um, insurance must, must cover um, persons on the autism spectrum. So that's out of committee and also House File 74 um, just passed on Thursday midday and um, it uh, lifts the, um, the lifetime cap. There's no more lifetime cap on vehicle modifications under the ID waiver. Um, now this changes uh, it to what is on the brain injury waiver. They, they will be the same now, right? Or yeah, close. so it's home and, ve home and vehicle oh, modifications. Yeah. So right now the individuals who are on that intellectual disabilities disorder, uh, let me say that again. <laughs> For those individuals who are on the intellectual disabilities waiver, um, they can only spend, it's about a little over $5,000 for their entire lifetime on home and vehicle modifications, but somebody that's on the brain injury waiver has a $6,000 annual cap. So they can spend $6,000 each year. So what they're doing is making it um, so that, that there's more um, flexibility for people that are in the intellectual disabilities um, waiver so that they can get access to um, additional home and vehicle modifications, which sounds like a great idea. Yeah, that's it's really great. And this passed out of um, House Health and Human Services unanimously, so we're really grateful to see that um, unanimous support, and hopefully it will get to the floor and have the same support. Um, and we know there's some um, fiscal impl implications for this, so we'll know more about that later and when that comes up. Um, in the meantime, these are three great um, pieces of legislation that are moved forward and if you know that your legislator has been helpful in moving these along, reach out and thank them and um, 
ask for their support on the House floor also. Yeah, and I know a lot of you have been kind of following the guardianship um, changes over the many years that we've been dis they've been discussed here at the Capitol. I know we've got some advocates who came and spoke a couple weeks ago to the subcommittee. Um, that's House Study Bill 109. Um, I don't really have any updates to report except to say that it's kind of on hold until we see what the Senate version is going to look like. So we're not probably going to talk about a lot about that until we know a little bit more. We know what um, is in the House right now is not going to be what's the final um, version. They've got to do some work with both sides of the aisle on, on making sure that that does what they mean it to do and doesn't endanger um, people, protected persons. But I did mention the reorganization bill earlier. That's um, 1,560 some pages and I actually read it all. Um, last weekend, and um, the, the bill numbers are Senate Study Bill 1123 and House Study Bill 126. They're almost identical. There's one division that's different. Um, and But I think the big part is over 900 pages is just moving all of the pieces into the Health and Human Services um, Department. So that merging of the Department of Public Health, Human Rights, and uh, Medicaid and human services all together into a, and aging into a big um, uh, department. Um, that's most of the bill um, and there really isn't a lot controversial. There's a lot of really good changes that um, change language to person first language. Um, there was a lot of places where the, co the laws still talked about autistic persons so they're changing that to for instance to be individuals with autism. Um, they're doing some updated terms, so you're not saying insane, you're using proper terms. Um, and so that's, that's all good. Um, we know one piece that's going to be a little controversial is uh, moving vocational rehabilitation that's currently in education over to workforce development. So I know that there will be conversations, but they have, they've not had a meeting on that yet. They had their first subcommittee meeting in the Senate and it was on some of the other areas. Um, they didn't talk about education or health and human services and some of the things that we've been watching. So we'll probably report on that next week if they have some some meetings there. Yeah, and I think we're, you know, watching it too to, um, you know, make sure the state is addressing the needs of people with disabilities and that, in, you know, so far is in a bunch of different offices. Um, so it may, you know, have good uh, implications for how we all work to get work together better um, at the state level um, but you never know so there's always the devil's in the details and thank you Amy for reading all those details <laughs> and giving us the bullet points so that I didn't have to read it all it put me to sleep after like five pages so I really appreciate you reading it um, and that's why we have Amy so all of you don't have to read 1500 pages of a bill you know written in legal lingo so yeah no fun um, what else? Anything else we're monitoring? I think that's about it for this week. We are monitoring more, and we'll talk more next week, um, especially about um, the report that's come out um, with recommendations for Medicaid waivers. We're going to go into some detail on that next week. But we do want to wrap up um, today with our shout out, and it goes to Roxanne Coggle, who is actually on the DD Council. And if you don't know, the DD Council members are all appointed by the governor. And she actually um, is a parent advocate, and she also works for the Epilepsy Foundation. Um, and as a volunteer, she works for the Autism Society of Iowa um, because of her uh, work as a parent advocate. And the reason we're giving Roxanne a shout out is because she is very helpful to the council and to us in keeping an eye on legislation and what legislators are saying about issues um, such as epilepsy and autism and is another eye beat on the ground person on the phone that we can count on um, to help us know as a council and as people who are talking to our legislators um, what parents are saying and what um, uh, organ other organizations that are our partners what their needs are and what um, their concerns are so she's been a great inf information um, gatherer for us and um, is a, uh, a great member for the council. So we all should be proud of her. So great job and thank you, Roxanne, for all that you do. And with that.
that and wrapping up. I think that's a good wrap. Reach out to your legislators if they're doing good things and tell them how much you appreciate them. Thank all right. you all. Thanks. Bye.